Hello everyone, Nadlabs here. Today we're going to be making this flood fill algorithm in the Godot game engine version 3.5 stable where we can easily just click and we can fill in a given area. I can also show it iteratively, meaning I can like click and then I can press a button to continue the steps and show that it's actually filling it in step by step. And I'll be going through the logic behind the step. How did I think of it? Or not how did I think of it, but how did I get to the point where I could understand it and build it myself? Because I, I tried watching a couple YouTube tutorials. They were kind of theoretical. I wanted something more practical. Like how do I actually program this thing in? So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. And as you can see, we have an error because um, this iteration code is a bit um, janky. It's a little bit, uh, it, it, it's not designed to be used in production, but uh, for this uh, simple fill in the, fill in the color one, it works perfectly and you can make a paint app with this or if you want, you can create some sort of mechanic um, up to you and I can show a couple extensions on it. But first let's get through the theory of it. Let's say I have this given a space, right? Let's say I have this black space in the middle and I wanna make it a different color. Let's say I'm going to make it, I don't know, I wanna make it blue. How does an application like paint know, for example, if I go over here and paint and I just draw like some random shape and if I click in the center with the paint bucket, of course, if I click in the center, paint knows to fill in everything up to that where wherever I drew. How does it know to do that? What, what's the logic behind it? Well, if we zoom into this little painting I drew or a little abstract art, you can see everything is just made of pixels. So obviously paint went around and asked each pixel around the starting place where I clicked, uh, could you fill that in? And it kept on going around and around and around, not in a circle, um, well, kind of in a circle, but it kept on going around in a sort of fashion, like spreading out from the center and like trying to figure out where are the boundaries of this, of this uh, uh, shape that I clicked in. And that's kind of what we're doing over here. And we're doing it with um, pixels in Godot over here. We're doing it with a tile map, as you can see. Uh, I just have two tiles, uh, one white, one black. It doesn't really matter. But but essentially what we want is one that is the walls of our of our object. And we want something that's what we're actually painting with, uh, what we're painting with. Of course, you can switch this up with code or you can have multiple different tiles or whatever. But, you know, just for the basics, let's have a black and white tile and back to paint. So what are we going to do here? Well, when we click right? We want to, we want to tell Godot a couple things. We want to tell Godot, we want to tell Godot, we want to say that we have this uh, list of uh, tiles that we want to look at. So obviously we have list number one over here, or our object number one in our list. So uh, one, this is going to be the first thing in our list. So this, this is going to be the first thing in our list or the first object in our list. And what we, what do we want to do? Um, well, we want to tell Godot, um, we want to tell Godot a couple things. So let's just say this is our, um, I, when I was reading the computer science text, they called it a Q. Uh, I'm just going to write the letter Q um, to represent the idea of the list or the Q or something you wait in line for. Um, but essentially what we want to say is we want to tell it, we want to tell Godot that whatever's in the front of this list, uh, we want to take it, right? We want to take this um, object, this position, this tile, and we want to, you know, kind of like search out from the center of it search out in left, right, up, down. We want to search all directions. We can even go diagonally, but um, a lot of uh, uh, flood fill algorithms do not encounter the diagonal or they don't really care about it. I'm not going to care about it either. So we want to tell it to check the diagonals. We want to see if it's the same color of the spot we clicked in. Remember this, the square behind this is black. Uh, so we want to make sure that the ones we're filling to are also black. Uh, we want to tell it to set these to actually blue, right? We want to like color fill these in blue. We want to fill them in blue if it matches the same color. So we're not going to fill this in blue because that wouldn't be flood filled. That would just be flooding, right? How do we do that? Well, there are a couple ways to approach this. I try to approach this with an if else statement type of approach or a for loop, but, um, and I'm kind of, you can pause and think about all the different type of loops. And that's a big hint, uh, in programming, but the loop that we want to use is the while loop, the while loop. Why the while loop? Um, well, the while loop, what's special about the while loop? The, the spe what's special about the while loop is not only is it never almost almost never used in programming, it's actually perfect for our job because while this queue is filled up, right? Let's say we have a, a couple different uh, uh, spots in our program, right? Let's say we have two, three, four, uh, because we added them in. Uh, we were not going to add a uh, number five here because it's red and we didn't click on a red uh, red square over here. We clicked on a on a black square, so we'll only add the same colors. Uh, we'll only add tiles that are the same color as the one that we started on or clicked on. So obviously then we can add two, three, four to the queue. And what do we do then? Well, once one is gone, right? Once one is gone from the queue, right? When we, when we uh, call the function pop or push or no, no, sorry, when we call the function pop, or let's say we were able to get rid of one from this queue, 
because obviously it's blue now. We don't we don't need to worry about it. Um, we can move all of these over one, and we can say okay, next turn. Okay, two. Okay, well, let's look at two. Okay, well, obviously we want to set blue uh, two to the color blue, right? Um, so we can just do that. Okay, it's blue. Now we can tell uh, number two. Can you please look at all your directions? Uh, we can obviously go back. As you can see here, we can go back to this first square. It kind of wastes CPU cycles and it's kind of redundant, but we don't have to necessarily program it out because um, we should technically be done uh, instantly. Or um, I'm hoping you're not trying to fill in like a 500 tile by 500 tile square. Um, but we can we can keep it in. It doesn't really matter. Um, we check all the other tiles. Is it is it black? Uh, if it's black, then add this to the queue and if it's not black just ignore it and skip over it and as you can see over here we have a, a new person to add to the queue so we'll just call this one number six and we'll add six to the queue over here and we're going to continue on with our uh queue oh okay so now that's uh, and then we're going to say okay we're going to look at number three now okay what's number three about uh okay number three. Oh, okay number three is um obviously we want to set number three to blue we want to set number three to blue and then we want to look at the surroundings. Okay. So we can go over here, here again, we can go over here, but uh, it doesn't really matter. And we can go over here and then we can add, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine, and you get the picture, right? We can continue adding on stuff and then we can eventually after some time, we can fill these in. We can look at four and we just ask four, what are you looking at? Okay. Four is looking at six. Okay. We can fill in six and then we'll go to uh, number six okay number six was over there then we can obviously we'll add we would have added seven and eight and seven and eight would have filled it in and we would have got we would have went from something that is a red a red a hollow circle to a red circle with blue filled in if that didn't make sense hopefully it'll make sense when we program it out and let's get to programming it so obviously you just want to set up a tile uh, a tile map with a black and white tile it doesn't really matter what you do what size you do it might take a while if you're like filling in like a huge space but if you're keeping it kind of small it doesn't really matter um, let's just put another one in for fun. Obviously, once you, once you have your scene set up with a tile map, you want to add a script, of course, and we're going to do a couple things. We obviously want to make this like a paint sort of application where we click somewhere. If we just press click, and obviously I defined this uh, action by project settings, input map, and I made an action called click. I also made R for restart and N for next, which is iteration. You don't need that. But if you just want to click somewhere and, you know, actually fill in something, you don't, you just want to create a mouse button and add uh, not that hard. So we want to start the fill. Okay. Let me just get rid of this because this might be confusing for a beginner, right? We want to make a function called start to fill. Why? Because obviously we want to be able to reuse this. So function start to fill. Uh, what do we have to take in? We have to take a position, right? A world position, uh, world position, uh, obviously going to be type vector two and it's going to return nothing. Uh, so let's just have this in and okay. So we need a world position here. So where are we starting from? We're going to be starting from get underscore get underscore global mouse position. If you don't know what I mean by global position, well, obviously over here on our tile map, you can see in the bottom uh, left corner, uh, I might zoom in uh, if I know how to use my editing program, you can see we have this, um, you can see we have these uh, tile map coordinates. But in Godot, if I was able to bring in a random node, uh, if I was bringing in a random node, you can see that if we go to the transform, it has a very large X and Y. And this does not compare to the X and Y over here um, when we zoom in on this little node over here. It is 44 by 69, and over here it's 357 by 553. We have to convert between those two positions. How? Well, Godot has a really easy function called uh, world to map, and obviously we're going to be making a map pause. Um, uh, this will be the map pause starting, like the starting position on the map, and it's going to be world from world position, world to map, and we're just going to be giving it a new position. Uh, 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 we're going to be giving it a map position. So if we just want to see what this looks like, um, we can see that when we click, we're getting 84 by 28 when this would have been like, I don't know, like 500 pixels by 200 pixels down. So it's just a way we can interact with the tile map. Of course, uh, when we're defining this function, there, we might also want to define another thing, which is cell to set. Like cell do we want to convert to? Well, okay, we can obviously give it a default parameter of one. Why am I giving it a default parameter of one? If I go to the tile map over here, you can see black is one and white is zero. And this is just default. If you wanted to make a paint application where if you wanted to make a paint application where you had multiple of them, obviously you would be setting this to like two, three, four, whatever your different colors mean. But over here, we just have one color and it's going to be black. So I'm just going to use the default parameter in this instance. We also have to figure out which cell type are we replacing? Uh, what do I mean by that? Remember in our paint example, we wanted to replace the black tile. Uh, remember how this was all, remember how this was all black before. 
we wanted to replace the black and make it blue. How do we do that? Well, we can easily just, when we click, we can get the tile type. Like what is the tile we're trying to replace? How can we do that? And how do I even know that's possible? Well, I go into the tile map documentation and I scroll down and I'm like, oh, okay, can I, oh, I can get cell, get, oh, get cell. Okay, what does get cell do? Returns the tile index. What does that mean? Well, it literally means that I'll be able to figure out which tile I clicked on. So we can do something like var cell type to replace uh, is uh, get cell, get cell. And then we're just gonna be getting the position map pause start. The map position where we click, x and map position where we clicked y and if we just want to print out cell type to replace um, f5 you can see that we click we get negative one because that's there's no tile there and if we, if we click over here it's zero because that's white if i was going to place some black tiles over here you can see that when i click it will say one because i'm clicking on a uh, black tile either way uh, that's out of the way and now we know what type we're replacing and where we're starting from that's a lot of direction considering our example was all we really needed to get started was we all, we only needed the position we're starting from and what cell type are we trying to replace well we got both of those down let's start to well, let's get to programming the flood fill part so now we're going to get to the flooding and filling part of the flood fill algorithm so obviously when we want to fill we are going to use the fun uh, function called set cell so set cell takes in a couple of parameters the x y and the tile type uh, we don't really need to worry about the stuff over here that doesn't matter so where do we want to set the cell to like where are we trying to set where are we trying to change the cell well obviously where we clicked right so we want to set cell of our map pause start.x and our map pause dot start y and we're going to set it to tile uh, we're going to set it to the cell to set right if you if you look over here what tile do we want to use we will we want to use the cell to set and if we start we can see click and we get our black tile where it should be right where we click but we want to like expand and go around we want to ask this one this first tile we want to ask it hey can you um you know uh once you're filled in with your blue can you like look at your neighbors and tell us what's up over there and if they are can you add them to a special list where we can kind of examine them for later Okay, so how do we do that? So obviously we're going to make our queue. Remember I said there was a queue variable, like a, a lineup. Uh, if you don't know what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say queue. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Q. Okay, that's definitely how you pronounce it. But um, essentially we have a lineup. So how do we get this lineup? So we're just gonna call it this. And we're going to add our map pause start because obviously what we're trying to get here is some sort of recursive function. And it's best to start with where we click. Okay, so while there's a queue, while there's a lineup, what are we going to do? I'm trying to think from this from first principles. Well, if there's a lineup of cells, right? If there's a lineup of objects in a, if there's a lineup of objects, what do we want to ask the objects? Well, could you, what do we, what do we do with the lineup? Well, we ask the first person in the line, let's say there's like a bunch of different, uh, uh, let's say there's a bunch of different people here in this line. We will, we ask the first person, can you please step out of line? And uh, let's call this the cust like the current cell we're looking at. I was going to call it customer because I was thinking of a lineup, but the, what we're going to ask the current uh, the first person in the lineup to leave. Okay, how do we do that? So pop, pop, front. Uh, if what the hell's pop front? If I click Control click, uh, you can see pop front returns variant. That's why we had this error over here where we can't get the type because uh, Godot really doesn't know what type we're going to be getting back, and it re removes and returns the first element of the array. So we can set, we can use this uh, value uh, that it gives us somewhere else. Uh, so pop front. Uh, what's the value? Well, it's obviously going to be a vector two because our our queue is only ever going to be full of vector twos. So we get the first spot in our in our uh, lineup and we ask this uh, cell or we ask whatever position we just clicked. Okay, we we're gonna ask this, can you look Can you look one up? Can you look one left, right and down? And can you ask, and can you like check if they're the same type that you are? Like, uh, are they the same as this in invalid cell or if it was white where we clicked and we clicked, uh, are the surrounding ones also white or are they black? Like, well, can we get a read on the situation, right? Is it the cell type to replace? So we're going to ask the current cell's neighbors if they are a certain type. So we're going to say if current cell, right? If, if we're going to say if get cell, and we're going to say current cell dot x and current cell dot y. But we, we don't want to check the, where the current cell is. We're going to check one to the left, right? Let's start with left, right? So x minus one. So if we're over here, um, x minus one is moving to the left. Uh, we're going to ask if this if this current cell right if this current cell is equal equal to um if it's equal to the cell type we want to replace what are we going to do well we're obviously going to set the cell to um 
obviously we're going to set set cell what cell are we setting we're going to be setting this cell whatever arbitrary position it is we're going to change its color to whatever we uh requested at the beginning okay and uh, we're going to add oh uh, yeah we can't forget we're going to get q dot append we're going to append this uh this position and that's uh literally all we need um and as you can see over here it says uh, q dot append is it has too many arguments well we actually have to convert this to a vector too uh da -da -da. And there we go. That's literally all we need to get one side of the story working. As you can see over here, we have a situation set up where we can fill up our lines to one extent. Of course, um, this isn't what we wanted. We wanted, you know, up, down, left, right. But you can kind of see the story of how we're asking. Um, uh, we're, we're kind of asking each block next to it to add itself to a lineup. Like, hey, go check out this lineup. Um, it'll convert you to a certain color. And... If it keeps going, if it, if they're the same of where we click, right, we're just going to keep on adding them to the queue. And then if it's if it's a different color, as you can see over here, it doesn't go to the white, but because it's a different color than where we originally clicked. But if I click in the white, you can see it changes the white and stops when it hits a color that wasn't white. If this isn't making sense, there are a bunch of other resources that help uh, understand flood fill, but maybe rewatch or maybe try to draw it out yourself and think from first principles because we basically accomplish flood fill in like very, very few lines of code. And the rest is just copy pasting. We're just trying to make sure that um, we, we go to the right. We're just trying to make sure we go to the right over here. And if, if we run the scene now, you can see that we get like a, a left right pattern going up uh, over here. And then we also have the, the Y pattern, right? We are also going to be, and then over here, instead of plus one, uh, instead of having a minus one, plus one, Right, we also have our minus one and my, uh, we have our minus one, uh, one and uh, plus one on the y direction. As you can see over here, I'm doing nothing special. I'm just keeping the same same stuff we had up above. Uh, I just flipped these two lines, sorry. But as you can see, that's literally all we need. And most of it is repetitive and we can kind of clean this up if you wanted to, but um, I like it where I can read each line. And as you can see, now we have flip fill. It's kind of magical how these lines come together to create the cohesive whole of flood fill. And if you're done with the um, algorithm or tutorial and that's all you wanted to come here to learn, uh, go ahead, click off the video. But if you want to see the iterative version, I can always explain how to do that. Okay. If you want to know how to make this iterative function, or if you want to like, if you just want to have it for the animation sake, like if you want to have something like this where you can show your friends, look, it's filling in, it's being intelligent. If you want that, it's very simple to add. Um, instead of having our, uh, queue um, local in within this function we kind of want a global queue so queue global and we want to because we have to pass it between functions it's just easier if you have it as a global variable of course this is just for demonstration purposes or animation purposes so we, oh, over here we have so of course we have this for animation or just um, educational purposes so it's so in my opinion, it's okay if it's a little bit messy, but over here, we're just making a global queue and we're giving it a same thing over here. We're telling it to add the first spot where we clicked into the lineup. And then what we want to do afterwards is we want to say, instead of doing a while loop, we just want to say iterate over the first one. That's the only difference. The only difference is that this one is in a while loop and this one isn't. And if we run that, right, we click and we click N, which is what I've set up over here for iterate. We can see that it obviously goes to the list and it you know pops the first one in it and it's like hey can we look at which or what spot you're in and can we like check the neighbors and fill them in and you can see over time it will fill it in and uh the while loop is obviously much faster than i could press but you can see we can slowly go over the blocks and they fill in and when we get to the end it crashes because obviously um it's not designed to handle if i click n again it will crash um because it's not designed to handle uh, the end condition, but you can see uh, that's a way you could get to loop. Um, there are ways if you want to um, uh, prevent it from crashing. And thank God I brought up crashing because there is a very big problem. If you leave this, uh, uh, if you leave this script in its current state as is to an open world uh, where it has in unlimited access to all the tiles in the Godot uh, universe, right? If we just uh, uh, get rid of these errors. If we give it access to that, right? I click. I can't click again. My CPU or at least Godot is going crazy. It's like going through every single tile imaginable and it will fill up your RAM uh, if Godot didn't have any safety hooks. So what can you do? Well, if you want to, um, this is a little bit of a janky way to do it. Of course, there are other ways to validate like if you're within a, if you're within a, um, a closed shape, but 
um, a really quick way to do it if you don't want to waste too many. Uh, if you like want to be a little bit efficient is just make a variable i and you can say while q um, i plus equals one. So you get a for loop kind of behavior going and you say while or if you say if um, if i is uh, I don't know if i is greater than let's say let's say um, 10,000. Uh, right, just some generally large number. Then just uh, uh, then just q dot clear, I guess, would be the most efficient way to stop it. And as you can see, we still have our thing working, but now we can see we only get our um, our flood fill to a certain extent. We don't have it breaking our program. If I just ex uh, open up here, you can see that we have it fill right. It fills up to its uh, greatest extent, but then it doesn't go past a certain point because it will waste CPU cycles or not waste CPU cycles, but it will just be a waste of resources. You can see that if we click and we expand, you can see that it's able to fill in up to here. But if we let it run, it will just fill in the entire the entire map and it will just keep on going and going until everything's a black square. So you can stop it prematurely just by having, you know, a safety check over there. And if you want to, um, you don't have to use this as a safety check. You can just use this as a, you know, as a way to, uh, create a potion slash effect. Uh, five is a little bit ugly. You can have four. I think that would look nicer. You have four. Um, so I'm guessing multiples of four. Actually, no, it'll be four, it will be 16. Um, 16 would look nice. So if we just go like this, 16, 16 doesn't look nice. But you can just play around with it and you can, you know, uh, play, experiment, see which ones look nice. It seems to be one less than 31. There we go. Um, yeah, it, it's a symmetrical, you know, a splash pattern that contained within walls and you can place it wherever you want you know um just thought just a simple way to do it i haven't seen anyone make this in godot yet i at least i haven't so i'm happy if i can make a tutorial and help someone out and if they have i'm sorry i missed it and being redundant anyway have an amazing day so obviously when we start our fill we want to set cell right we want to set the cell okay so this is just you know uh set up and then we want this is actually like um uh this is the the flooding, right? This is the flooding. How do we flood it? So a flood filling, flooding, filling, flooding and filling. Okay. This is the flooding and filling. Uh, 